sorrow for four slain women and anger at what appears to be targeted killings, including Cambria Harris's mother, Morgan. I think it's sad that time and time again that we have to keep coming here to gather for sad circumstances like this. When our family members go missing, there were four women found. And those women had families. They were mothers, they were cousins, sisters, and they didn't deserve that. Morgan Harris, Mercedes Myron, Rebecca Contois, and a fourth woman police say they can't yet identify. The last thing that we want is for this fourth victim to remain a Jane Doe. It's always unsettling when there's uh, any kind of a serial killing. Jeremy Anthony Michael Skabeki faces four counts of first-degree murder. First charged and detained in May after police recovered Contois' remains. Now, even though they have not found the remains of the other women, police say DNA evidence links Skabeki to the deaths of Harris, Myron and the unknown woman, all killed between March and May. We're of the belief with the information we have right now that Skibiki acted alone. Move it over this way a little bit more. For months, there have been community searches for Myron and Harris. Recently, we talked to Myron's grandmother, putting up missing posters. It's scary. We just want to find her alive. Myron and Harris both came from Long Plain First Nation, not far from Winnipeg. Right now, it's just really trying to figure out how we can come together um, to support each other. Chief Kyra Wilson is also related to Contois. She was also a part of my extended family. So I have connection to the three women that were identified today. And it's just, um, it's a really, really sad day. And an angry day with renewed calls for protections for Indigenous women. Not a day goes by that we don't ask for that. And today is why. Others want to see this treated as a hate crime saying the problem of targeted violence is bigger than one man. It hasn't made the city any safer by him being off the street because women have still gone missing and murdered since the time he's been incarcerated. Meanwhile, from Winnipeg's new mayor, acknowledgement Indigenous women are being failed. As a citizen, uh, I, I cannot accept that. And as a city, we must not accept that. We need to do more. Here in Manitoba, politicians of all stripes have been saying that for a very long time with little progress. They have indeed, Cam. Do we know anything else about the fourth victim, uh, victim or, or whether there might actually be others? Well, the police today did release a photograph of a jacket they believe belonged to that fourth unnamed victim who they actually believe was killed first. They're asking anyone that recognizes that jacket in that photo to get in touch with police with any information they may have. As for the question of whether there could be more victims, I put that to the police in the news conference today. They say right now their evidence is pointing just to these four victims. All right, Cam McIntosh in Winnipeg, thank you. Let's bring in someone with deep roots in the community, first as a storyteller and as a former Grand Chief, Sheila North. Sheila, thank you for being with us. This is, this is really tough. You have been a stalwart in your community and as someone who's been telling the stories of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, what, what is happening in your mind on a night like this? Well, it doesn't get any easier every time you hear it. It actually brings you back to the same feelings and emotions the first time you hear it and the first time you understand the magnitude of what happened. And it brought me back to that very same place today, this afternoon when I heard and it stopped me in my tracks and my heart is broken and I can't imagine how the families are feeling. Oh, I know, I hear that. You know, there, there's so much, Sheila, that we don't know about what happened here, but from all the work in the inquiry into missing, murdered Indigenous women and girls, there are strong recommendations, and I'm curious what you think has not been addressed. Well, I think that there's been a great effort, and I know many great people that are involved in trying to have an implementation effort and uh, trying to, you know, make sure that these calls to justice are being implemented. Um, and, and I applaud the efforts on that, but we're not seeing some very, very important steps, immediate steps that, and one of them including um, supporting in any single and every opportunity we can to uphold and uh, um, honor Indigenous 
indigenous women by providing the necessary resources they need to be self-sufficient and that's proper education, lift them out of poverty, childcare and uh, you know jobs and training. Our, our women are dying literally on our streets because of the lack of, of respect that they have in their own country and we all can do something about it, to, about it right now just the basics, eh? just the core basics. Sheila, thank you for spending time with us. We will talk again. Thank you very much, I could say.